Good evening, everybody. It's Daryl. Welcome back. Uh, good to see you all. This is the last week of class. Why hasn't time flying? Uh, uh, every every single class you're going to get this this long, four weeks. So it all seems to go by in a hurry, doesn't it? So um, I've been uh, grading all day and, and uh, loving what I'm seeing. I've seen a lot of great presentations. Um, seen a couple that need some help. Uh, but uh, I'm a little over halfway through. So if I've uh, graded your presentation, you should have feedback waiting for you. If you haven't gotten any feedback yet, you'll get it tomorrow. Um, these, uh, these projects take a little longer for me to get through. They're all, you know, four minutes long. And so I have to give each one my individual attention. So those of you who haven't received any feedback, you'll be assured you'll, you'll get it tomorrow. I'm all over halfway through. So I, I'm doing well and I, I'm sure I'll, I'll get them all out tomorrow. But, uh, those that I have seen, I've been very pleased with. I think you guys are, uh, really on target. You're doing really well. So, um, uh, we're moving on into week four. And week four is a continuation of the process. Week four, we're going to make the presentation better, more refined based on feedback. The entire week is based around the notion of feedback. There's one last chapter for you to read. It's from Resonate and it deals with feedback. So uh, you guys can, can get to that last chapter of Resonate as you wish. Uh, anybody who's still having trouble accessing the books, you know, get a hold of me. I'm uh, kind of fed up with O'Reilly, but uh, making sure that everybody gets access to the books as needed. So if you're ha having trouble, let me know. Uh, I, I, I want to know how everybody's experience is going. But uh, I hope that uh, that hasn't soured you on, on the books. Nancy Duarte is very sincere in wanting us to use creative presentations to change the world, to go out and spread our ideas. And uh, I hope that you take with you as you leave this class, a lot of her ideas. Uh, and I hope you take her method of making presentations with you, that you start with the story, that you start with the audio, that you don't start with the slides. That's, that's the wrong way to go. It, it always uh, ends up in a, um, a dead end. So always know that the audience and the story come first. And uh, use presentations to get your ideas out into the world and really have an impact on people. And, uh, you know, continue to learn and experiment. Don't make this the last presentation you're going to do. It's the very first, you know, you're going to be making presentations in all your classes, and you'll have a chance to try new ideas, and new methods. Uh, and uh, experiment a lot and learn a lot uh, about how to get it down and how to really connect and uh, spread your ideas to people. So the baseline of this presentation has been about putting yourself forward to a prospective employer. It's been about what we call your brand, that you are representative of your, the set of talents and uh, skills that you have and, and the, uh, uh, the intent that you have to, to offer your skills to the world. And so here at Full Sail, we have, uh, we spend a lot of time on this notion of personal branding. I'm sure you've heard this term before. Branding is usually, you know, a term of fashion, of art. You're gonna hear it a lot in social media that someone becomes a brand just by being themselves. But in the creative uh, media world, it's all about reputation. It's all about what you can do for others and for the, <clears throat> for the community. And so the work that you do in the creative world becomes your brand. Uh, do you do interesting creative work? Do you show up for jobs on time? Are you helpful to other people? Are you the kind of person that other people enjoy working with and want to hire? All that kind of information kind of travels around the world, whether you, you control it or not. And so we, it's worthwhile in school to think about what your brand is, about what you project to the world 
because soon enough it's going to be hard hard to control it. And the way you do control it is by your good acts. The things that you do are down to your name, and you want to protect that. And um, one of the things we do in thinking about ourselves is comparing ourselves to big corporations. Big corporations use branding to sort of personalize themselves, to become uh, something specific in the, in the mind of the public. And they do this with an implicit brand promise. A brand promise is, is an oath that the company is implicitly making to the customer, to the public that says, we will do this and be faithful to it. And it's not always completely clear what the brand promise is, but, uh, and you yourself as a student, if you're thinking about your own personal brand, what it is that you have to offer the world, you don't necessarily know for sure yet. You've got to go through all these classes. As you're learning all these classes, you know, this, this week I asked you to imagine that you'd taken these classes and you and you gathered all this information from them. Well, what you're gonna find is that not only are you gonna gather the information you expected, but you're gonna learn a lot that you didn't know about, didn't expect. You're gonna find skills that you're really good at that you didn't realize that you had. And so the, uh, this exploration becomes your brand. It's what makes you unique. And that's what you want to be taken care of. And so protecting a brand has a couple of components to it. It really is about uh, almost like hail. How do people know that the real you is speaking? And a lot of the same components apply. You want to be transparent. You want to be completely real with people. You have to be honest about what you can and cannot do. As you go out into the world as a new uh, graduate, you know, uh, you might think that the, the only important thing is just to get the job, to get through the very first interview. And people might ask, you know, do you know Photoshop? Do you know Maya? Uh, do you know this program or that? And the easy thing to do is just to lie and say yes, thinking that maybe you can go home that night and watch a few YouTube tutorials and, and pick it up. But the truth is that you, you've got to be scrupulously honest with people because they'll always find out. If you say you could do something and you couldn't, that will come through. So it's always the best policy to be very clear about what you can and cannot do. And you need to be secure enough in who you are that what you can do is worthwhile to people and is worth offering. Be unique. This is where those hidden skills come in, into play. As you go through uh, all your classes, you're going to discover that there are certain things that you can do better than your classmates. Maybe things that you don't even really know about yet. You know, maybe you're, you're planning to be a master animator and you suddenly discover that you're really great at rigging. You're really great at getting into the, the, the underbones of a 3D character and making it move and live and so forth. And that that becomes your specialty. So once you discover what you're really good at, then promote that as your skill because uh, that's what you're legitimately going to be able to shine out as above your other uh, competition. And finally, don't compromise. Uh, early in your career, you know, you think that the only thing is to get the very first job, to get in somewhere, and then whatever it takes, do that. But uh, there are often times that you'll work for a price or you'll do a job that you shouldn't do. And uh, learning to say no early on is going to save you a lot of trouble afterwards. You know, sometimes it hurts. You know, you, you don't want to turn on any jobs. But there are times uh, when you're getting started that, that you'll be offered something that you know you really shouldn't be working on or, or isn't right for you or is going to take up time away from getting to somewhere else. And uh, saying no will be hard but that's one of the things you have to learn to do in order to protect yourself and your brand is to know what jobs to take, what sacrifices to make, uh, and, 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 and when to say no. But uh, the main thing about selling yourself as a, a sort of a personal brand is this notion of a brand promise. What is it that you're offering to the world and what is it you're willing to do? And so thinking about 
what corporations do, there are certain uh, notions or rules of, of what a brand promise is. It must be credible. It must come from a place of heart or authenticity. And you make sure your brand is aligned with what you're chosen to do. And it has to be something that people want. It has to be have value or benefit to people. You know, it's no good to have a brand promise to do things that nobody's going to ask you to do. But the most important thing about a brand promise is that if you declare to the world that you can do this and such, then come through on that. Uh, deliver. Most importantly, brand promises are only good if they're kept. Your organization is storytelling becomes powerful uh, when the brand is clearly defined and has delivered on what you promised to say. And we can understand this by looking at certain brands and seeing what they offered and done. So if we look at, uh, you know, major brands like Amazon or Google, you know, what they're offering is, uh, Google offers a great data accuracy, great technical proficiency. Amazon offers uh, enormous ease of use. Amazon bends over backwards to make it easy for you to purchase. They're not necessarily always the cheapest, but they're always gonna be the most convenient. Their website is the easiest to use. Their, their delivery is the fastest. They've got the most uh, uh, distribution centers around so that uh, it just becomes second nature to think of buying from Google first uh, or buying from Amazon first. And that becomes a fulfillment of their promise. Their promise is not that they have everything or that they have the cheapest price. Their promise is they're gonna make the experience of shopping with them more, uh, more convenient, more easy to use, uh, more uh, uh, a simplistic part of your life. And that's what they do. Um, so, uh, let me get out of place here. I'm not a sorts here. Um, what we're really working on this week is feedback. We're learning how to make things better by giving and receiving feedback. And there are actual rules for giving and receiving feedback. We're going to have uh, uh, an assignment uh, this week to give you an opportunity to give feedback. Uh, there's plenty of opportunity for re receive feedback. Each one of you has put your project forward. I'm going to give you feedback. Uh, and you have an obligation not to do what I say, but to listen to what I say. There are rules for receiving feedback. There are rules for giving feedback. And we want to think about that and how we can use that to make ourselves better, how we can work within our creative cohorts and so forth. And uh, we used to make it a part of the, the class that students had to critique each other. But the fact is that if one student lets you down and doesn't provide a critique, then that means that the other student has not received the benefit that they were expecting to get. So uh, we, we put in a special assignment this week, 4.3, for people to practice giving feedback. And we've made the notion of students critiquing each other optional. That's why we asked you all to uh, put your project in the 3.3 uh, discussion board. That board is still open. You guys can go back and look at it. And if you go back and look at it today, you'll see that a lot of your classmates have put in their projects that they turned in to me last night. And those projects are up and available. And each person that put their project there is seeking feedback from their fellow students. Now, this is all voluntary. Nobody has to participate. So the best way for you to receive feedback if you want it is for you to participate and give feedback to other people. It's kind of like that um, a little plate at the, at the uh, checkout counter where you give a penny or take a penny. Uh, it only works if everybody participates. So um, we want to be able to give 
feedback that's useful, helpful, makes sense, and um, you want to be able to receive feedback in the manner in which it's uh, intended. So uh, we have rules for each, and let's go through those. Uh, so the first one is how to give feedback. This is the way that you properly participate in that process. And the first rule is create safety. What does that mean? It means that you have to be careful and mindful of where you're asking for feedback. You really don't want to go on Facebook or Reddit or someplace where people can be anonymous trolls and ask for feedback about your project. Because it's the nature of the internet is that people who are anonymous are going to say mean things just for the fun of saying mean things. And you really don't want to hear that stuff. So you want to seek feedback on your project among a group that you know has your back. And your cohort of classmates fits that bill. You're all going through school together. You're all supporting each other. You're all here under the professionalism guidelines of Full Sail. You know that your classmates are going to treat you with respect and you all have each other's best interests in heart. Now, when you go out into the working world and you get hired by a creative firm, then your coworkers at that firm are going to create the same zone of safety for you. That's where you can expect to find good, useful feedback. But you want to do it in a place where you can feel comfortable. You know that you're not really going to be uh, targeted or, or uh, people are going to uh, take cheap shots and everyone has your best interests at heart. Second rule, be positive. Now, that doesn't mean only say nice things. It means only say things that are proactive. Don't give feedback on things that are uh, baked into the project. You know, like, I told everyone that they had to talk about their brand. So you can't give someone feedback that they shouldn't talk about their brand. It's part of the project. So things that can be changed. Talk about the stuff that's actionable, that's fixable, that really will make an improvement and can be done in reasonable amounts of time. Now, along with this uh, is another corollary, be specific. Your feedback has to be something that people can actually think about engaging in and doing. So bad feedback is something like, looking at your slides, I don't like your fonts. It may be a, a truism, but there's nothing anyone can do with them. Saying, I don't like your fonts just says, well, they're not good now, but what should I do about it? So to give good feedback, you should say something like, you know, your fonts are so thin that they're hard to read from far away. You should use a thicker uh, font, maybe choose universe bold. And in that case, you're giving someone very specific advice about what they should do. You're not necessarily commanding that they're doing it. The other person who's receiving that advice has the notion of, of being able to think about it and choosing whether or not to do it. But if they chose to do it, they know exactly what to do because your advice is specific enough that you're telling them what can and couldn't be done. So don't talk in generalities. Don't talk about things that don't have a, uh, a changeable, fixable aspect to them. Be immediate. All right, it's, it's not any uh, secret here that we're all on deadline. We, we've got to get these things done by Sunday. And as you go out into the book world, that's not a secret that for probably the rest of your life, every project you're working on is going to be on deadline. So when someone asks you for feedback, if you can't give that feedback then and there in that moment, uh, you find out what the time parameters are. Because there's nothing more frustrating than receiving really good advice after it's too late to use it. And since we're all on deadline and we all have specific time frames, you need to be mindful of those time frames for other people to work on it. And in our case, most of you should be getting your, your projects posted in the uh, class discussion board today or tomorrow so that other people have a chance to look at it. And those of you that are going to give feedback to other classmates, 
you should try to get that done by Thursday or Friday so that the person whose project it is has time over the weekend to think about that advice and implement it or not. Nobody should be giving out advice at 930 on Sunday night because it's too late for them to make any changes. And finally, provide tough love. We all want to say we all want to uh, protect each other's feelings. But if someone who's a colleague is completely wrong and they misunderstood the assignment or they've just heading in the wrong direction and they sort of have to pull it all out and start over again, you're not doing them any favors by not telling them. They're going to find out eventually. And so the sooner you can put them on the right path, the better. And better that it come from a friend than from someone else or a than, than from a boss for certain. So providing tough love means that if you're really going to help your, your colleagues out uh, and they're completely off base, you need to let them know. Now, this may sometimes just be a matter of opinion. So you may think they're off base and they may disagree with you. That's fine, that's the nature of feedback. But don't be afraid of telling someone something that you think they ought to know uh, because you think you'll hurt their feelings. You'll find a way to say it in such a professional way that it's about the work, that it's not personal, and that they will get the information they need to know. So here's how the rules for giving to receiving feedback. Those are the rules for giving feedback. If you were asked to give feedback on a project, uh, those are the ways that you should go about it. Now, to receive feedback, number one rule is cultivate a growth mindset. What does that mean? It means that people who are agreeing to give you feedback are doing you a favor and you need to completely hear them out and you need to not be defensive or interruptive about it. Oftentimes people say they want feedback and really all they're looking for is, to, is fishing for compliments. And if they don't get compliments, they cut you off. And uh, you know, if, you, if they'll ask for feedback and you might say something like, well, um, I liked your audio, but I couldn't hear it because there was a sort of a buzz and, and you, you might jump in and say, oh, that's not my fault. It was the microphone. I had a bad microphone. I blah, blah, blah. There may be any number of reasons for whatever it is that someone's going to talk about. But you, as the person receiving feedback, have to stand back and let the other people give their full, complete thought. That is common courtesy. Because while there may be valid reasons for why you're going to say what you're saying, the minute you cut someone off in the middle of giving feedback, they will never give you feedback again. It's a sign of disrespect that you're not hearing their complete thought. It's also a bad idea that, and I see students do this all the time. And for 30 months as you go through full sale, I'll bet you keep seeing it time and time again. Every time a student stands up and offers this project for critique, before they allow you to say anything, they're going to list off 30 things that they know is wrong with it as a kind of armor or defense. You should never do that. You should never talk about the things that you're looking, the, 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 the chinks in the armor that you're looking for. First of all, if you don't mention it, oftentimes the other people won't see it. And second of all, you're asking for feedback. You should not be defensive about this. Um, if, if they see the same things you see, then uh, that actually becomes a, 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 a point we're making later on that, that it's, a, it's, it's a point of commonality. But you need to be able to let other people have their complete say before you step in and talk about many factors or you tell them why something is not your fault, etc. cetera. Uh, that is uh, showing them the respect that they deserve for giving you feedback. Take credit for your mistakes. If someone points something out that you knew that it was wrong, then that's the time afterwards to chime in and you have a bonding moment. It means that the two of you are looking at the project in the same way. And it actually is um, uh, kind of a good thing. Uh, but you need to let the other person give their full feedback first. 
focusing on self-improvement. And what does this mean? Well, you've got a particular list of things that you're worried about with your project and that you're thinking about. But when you offer your project up for, for uh, feedback, people come at their project, come at the project from a thousand different vantage points and they'll talk about a lot of things and they'll very often mention things that are completely irrelevant to you. And uh, that's fine. You just need to take that in stride. It's information for you. But in terms of you're getting useful information from the feedback, focus in on the stuff that you're looking to improve, that you're looking for advice about. Personally, when I would have meetings with clients and I would show off projects, one thing that kept happening to me is if, if I was talking about a project and, and I was running through uh, boards or, or showing off artwork or something that I'd done to a client and I had a dog somewhere in that uh, project, the, me the meeting would immediately get derailed when then people would start talking about what kind of dog it should be. You know, I had a collie and they wanted a shepherd in there, et cetera. And it was completely irrelevant, but it was just a, a, an outside detail. But somehow that always kept happening to me. And I, and I uh, bothered me until I just realized these things people wanna talk about and you need to let them talk about it. And it's not gonna harm you for them to give their opinions on stuff that doesn't matter. Um, it, it, uh, it just means that it takes a little bit of time and it's about personal relationships. But you yourself as need to draw from the feedback session the information that's going to help you improve what you're looking to work on. Learn from criticism. Sometimes people are going to have ideas that are contrary to yours and there isn't a way to resolve it. You know, you made this blue and somebody else thinks it should be brown. Well, that's just statistics really. You know, sometimes it's going to be about personal choices and not everybody has the same choices. Um, take it in as information. Make it, uh, uh, if everybody thinks it should be brown and you're the only one that thinks it should be blue, that's even more useful information. But in the end, it's your decision to make. So learn from criticism, but don't necessarily let it run your life. Finally, find lessons and inspiration in the success of others. We're all wanting each, uh, each uh, of us to do the best that we can. And when you see someone else hit it out of the park, uh, don't be jealous, don't compare yourself to them. Just realize that we're all learning and taking in information and doing things at a different time and pace. And that you can take their ideas and make them your own at some point down the road. So if you're taking all those lessons in, at some point you're end up, gonna end up using their ideas and making them your own. And that makes all of us better. So uh, those are the rules for uh, uh, receiving feedback. Um, so this specifically has to do with an assignment we have this week, 4.3, uh, called presentation feedback. I'm gonna dump out of my slides here and get to the uh, browser here. So 4.3, uh, it's very much like our 1.4 assignment in week one where you looked at a bunch of TED Talks. It's much simpler, it's not gonna take anywhere near that amount of time. But what we've done here is that we've made a, uh, you've, got to learn, you've got to download the instructions PDF. So anybody that has difficulty with the instructions PDF, I'm actually gonna put the, the links for the student files uh, in the announcements, you'll see that probably tomorrow. But if we look at the instructions PDF, on page two of the instructions PDF, we've got uh, links to three different student projects that are on YouTube. And we these are actual student projects. They are all pretty good, but they're not perfect. They can be improved. So this is your chance to critique these projects and figure out what they did right and give them advice on how to make it better. So each one of these is linked to a YouTube file, and it'll be a good chance for you to see. And at the age of 15, I began wanting to follow my dream goals as a digital.
they're all different types of projects, different types of uh, passionate presentations, passionate. and different types of degree programs. I'm a professional musician, a songwriter. So we want you to watch all three of these and then pick one. Remember, you don't need to do all three. You just need to pick one. And once you've picked one, we want you to answer a couple of questions. As you'll see in the instructions, we have prompts here. So tell us what you liked about it. Tell us what you think is, is potentially problematic. And I want you to give each one of these a specific piece of advice. So all you have to do is, is pick one of the three student projects to write about. And I want you to write one or two paragraphs, not very long. This shouldn't take, this assignment shouldn't take more than 15 or 20 minutes. You can do this as a simple text file. I don't need you to make any kind of special multimedia out of it. You don't have to add any artwork or anything like that. You could even write this up in the uh, um, uh, feedback box if you like. Uh, it's better off if you make a text file and, and upload it. But if you wanna put it in the text feedback file, that's fine. Anything you want to do to write it, but answer these questions for me. Tell me what you liked, what you think worked well. Think, tell me what you think the student should do to improve on it. Um, and here's a question from last week. Which of the three pillars of uh, uh, presentation does this appeal to? Are they appealing to ethos, pathos, or logos? So just uh, you know, put that in there. And so I want you to write one or two paragraphs telling me uh, what you think the student did right, what you think they could do to make it better, giving me good, actionable advice, feedback um, on improving it. And then finally, uh, I want you to add a third paragraph that reflecting upon your thoughts about feedback in general. How will you use feedback to make your own work better? So I want you to reflect on not just what the student is doing, but how you might use feedback to improve your own work. So that's a short piece. It shouldn't take you very long, but it is an, an opportunity to give feedback to someone else. And it's theoretical since these are all previous students. But uh, these YouTube links, uh, I, I'm gonna also post them in uh, the announcements uh, later but you can get them in the instructions PDF. So you just have to go into 4.3, download the instructions PDF, and that's the 4.3 assignment. Shouldn't take very long at all. And then the other main assignment this week is what we've been working on all along. It's the final version of your brand assignment. And um, your uh, some of the rules for the brand assignment, if you go in here, uh, there's a nice little video that we, or, uh, uh, or there's a, a, a PDF that really doesn't change things too much. Oops, that's the wrong one. It's, uh, here's the PDF. It just goes over what we're looking for in this final project and uh, some of the things that are different about 4.4 uh, from 3.4 is, one is you cannot turn in exactly the same file. So even if I told you you did a fantastic job in 3.4 and I gave you 100%, you cannot turn in the same file. You have to make some change. You have to add more art, take some art out, change a word or two in the, in the voiceover. It's up to you how much or how little you want to change it. Uh, there is no percentage amount, but you cannot turn in exactly the same file. So this is the week in which we're improving, we're uh, embellishing, we're finalizing the work. Now, some other things that we want, we want to make sure that this thing is self-running. So that means that if you're turning in a PowerPoint file, I don't want to have to click to go forward. I don't want to have to click to engage audio. I want everything to run automatically. As soon as I open that PowerPoint file, everything starts playing for me. So um, if you're working on PowerPoint and you currently have to click to advance slides, I want you to make it sure so that it runs automatically for the final. That's part of what we're doing to finalize our projects. 
And it's even a better idea if you can export it to video. Sometimes your PowerPoint projects have a little difficulty exporting the video. But if you didn't work in PowerPoint, a lot of the other one uh, methods go straight to video. If you worked in Adobe Spark, Adobe Spark exports as an MPEG-4 file. So that's a video file right then and there. And it mean, means that you have automatic playback. Now, it's not part of the assignment, but we highly recommend that if you've made your final project into a video, that you then take another step and upload it to YouTube and present it as a link from YouTube. The advantage here is just archiving your work. As a student, you're gonna go forward uh, from project to project. You can keep all your work on your laptop, but that presents a vulnerability if your laptop is ever broken or stolen or uh, crashes, you might lose some work. And so if you finished a project and you wanna keep that final project around, the best way to archive it is to use the free server space of YouTube. You know, YouTube's part of Google and they have unlimited server space and they're very reliable in terms of keeping things uh, up and running and so forth. And you can put stuff on YouTube and keep it private. So if you don't want to share it with the world, you can still use it, use their space as your personal storage. But because of the size of a video file, uh, oftentimes these video files that you guys are creating are three or 400, 600 megabytes. So if you wanted to, to share your project with someone, that's an awful lot of uh, uh, file to be sending as an email or shooting through a, a, a the internet somewhere. So if you can store it on YouTube and just send someone a link to, to watch it on, on uh, YouTube, that's a great way to share your work with people and archive it. So again, we're not, uh, we're not making a requirement. We're not getting any money from YouTube. We're just saying that's a great use of a free resource that's out there. And as you go through school, uh, it'll be a great way to archive your work as you go from project to project. Uh, and whether you let other people see it or not, it's completely up to you. But if you've got all this great work and suddenly you had, you know, some, some chance meeting with, with uh, some big entrepreneur who could change your life, you'd have a way to let them see your work almost instantaneously. Uh, and the last thing we want you to do uh, with 4.4 to make it different from what your uh, uh, your first your first draft is, is we want you to create what we're calling a changes list. We want you to create a short file in which you tell us what you did that you changed it from the first version to the final version. So this is a short text file. Uh, I don't really want it in the project itself. This is an additional resource that you're going to upload. So it's a text file, it's a Word file, you can upload it. You can actually put it in the, uh, again, the, the feedback box if you want. So once you upload your final project, your 4.4, we also want you to give us a short file saying, this is what I changed. And the changes list, this is a very common thing in the uh, professional world and you know, to keep track of, of what's happening from project to project. But it also helps us uh, to, to, uh, to, to see that you're uh, uh, managing uh, how you're improving the project and so forth. So don't forget to create and upload a changes list with your final version. And uh, that's pretty much what we're asking for. Uh, there is a final thing here, and we want you to save this for the end. It's called Portfolio Competency Self-Reflection. And this is uh, just a short file in which you you reflect on how you did this month. Talk about what you expected out of the class and how you think you did. And uh, this helps us to improve the class. It helps us to know uh, how you're feeling about the work that you're doing and so forth. And uh, we, we want you to do this at the end after you've completed all the other work, uh, but we do want you to do it. it it's, a, it's not for a grade, but we do hope you do it. And you can do it either as a uh, written document or a video file. So if you find it easy to do the, uh, the web video talking head kind of thing, you can just turn on your camera and talk for a few minutes and, and answer the questions. 
but if as you read the instructions here you're going to see these are uh what we're asking you to tell tell us about and it's not really going to be very difficult and once you start talking about yourself you know, you know you love it so uh try to get that done as well it's really helpful to us to improve the class so this is what we're asking for this week everything is due on sunday night if you need more time get a hold of me and i can give you more time but what's going to happen is that as soon as this class closes on week four at midnight on uh, eastern standard time that a minute later your next class opens up so back to back this is the way it works here at full sale as soon as this class closes your next class opens up and you can access that next class from the full sale one link that you originally got to our class from so it the link won't really appear until after midnight on sunday night but uh you know first thing monday morning it's there and so you'll have a brand new class for most of you that class is going to be pyp psychology of play it's a really cool class that looks at uh, work play balance and uh, psychological implications of uh, gameplay you know things like uh, outguessing the opponent and poker and and uh, a lot of different psychological processes so i think people find that very interesting class and those of you that have been struggling with time management there are tools in that class to help you manage your time and figure out how to how to you know uh, create some student only space in your hectic life so uh, that'll be a great class for many of you to take and that begins as soon as this one ends now when this class ends you'll still have access to it for about two weeks so if you're going to turn in work late you have a chance to do that if you want to come in later in the week and see what your grades are on the final projects, you can do that. You'll have access to this class for about two weeks. Uh, and then once all the grades are, are uh, finally recorded, uh, you lose access to it. So you're really only looking at one class at a time as you go through full sale. And the previous class you have access to for a week or two until the grades actually just finalize. Uh, but if you do have extensions, if you do have to uh, turn in work late, uh, you'll be able to get uh, uh, access to the class for that. And that's the way the system works. It just moves class to class to class. Every four weeks, brand new class. Uh, and uh, like we say, it's a roller coaster. But I think once you get used to that pattern, you'll find that it's very invigorating and that uh, there's no one class that can bore you because it never hangs around long enough. Um, so do we have any questions here? I know I've been talking quite a long time, but, uh, uh, how's everybody, uh, feeling about what they're doing? The people, uh, uh, are, are there, uh, still technical aspects that you're wanting help with? I know that some people are still needing help, uh, integrating their audio with their, uh, slides. And again, I'm around all week. I'm here to help do that. And, uh, um, for most of you, the easiest way that's going to be happening is to get a hold of me and ask for uh, to just kind of make an appointment because I can call you on the phone and talk you through it a lot easier than I can text it. Uh, if you're having trouble integrating audio, let me know and we'll make a time to get together and you can be at your computer and I can talk you through on the phone and we can make that happen. Uh, Anna asks, for the 4.3, do you want us to do all three feedbacks? No just one you you you've got a choice of three uh and i'd like you to watch all three you don't even have to watch all three if you know exactly what you want but here we have a, a an audio student here we have a cinema student and i believe this is an animator uh or graphic designer perhaps but uh they all use different types of software they all use different approaches um and you pick one so you only have to do one um anybody else have any questions all right um just as an aside one of the things that happened right before we uh, came on the air i know lots of people 
are, uh, you know, their, their choice of who they want to work for, their dream employer, it's always Blizzard. I just found out today that uh, Microsoft bought Blizzard. So uh, your, your dream employer shifts a little bit uh, if, if that's where you're at. Uh, oh, it was Bethesda, I'm sorry. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, big news in the game industry. Uh, Microsoft's uh, got billions of dollars in there. They're looking to buy them or looking to spend them. So uh, that means there's, uh, they're looking to hire, hire folks too. So uh, anyway, no need to get into that kind of gossip. I'm gonna let you guys go, um, but uh, know that you're, you're, you're moving into an industry that's uh, got lots of things going and lots of uh, business deals happening and lots of employment to be had. So, you know, uh, gear down, get through school and go out there and make your fortune. Um, this will be the, the last live class we have. Uh, so those of you who are watching on video, uh, make sure you, 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 you get it uh, done and, and click through. And anybody that needs help, I'll be around all week. Uh, and you've been a great class and I wish you good fortune. I'm gonna keep track of how everybody does as they go through school. Uh, I have lots of students that have gone on and done really amazing things and it's always great to see and track your progress. So I wish you guys luck as you go through full sale and I want you to have a great week. Good night, everybody.